Hey everybody, welcome back to some more tales from the internet. Stories from a somebody, stolen by, I mean read by a nobody, and shared with everybody. Here's a good old list of all the stories available today, so just sit back, relax, click on that like button, and enjoy some ripper tea. The first story by Catmama654. Would I be the a-hole if I told the landlord that my neighbors are smoking weed? Hi, first post and on mobile, so sorry about any formatting issues. I'm a 23-year-old female, and I live in the ground floor of a flat of a converted house. So, on the right side of the house is a student house, and in the left is my flat, and an upstairs flat. The students who have recently moved into the house have been smoking weed every day, and look, as I'm working at home at the moment, I smell it all the time, even with the windows closed. Now look, I don't want to get them into any trouble. It's illegal where I live, but I personally don't see much harm in it if you've got it for personal use. So you know, I don't want to get the authorities involved, but would I be the a-hole if I called the landlord to let them know? The smell is just awful, but I don't want to be a you know, pee-pee. I've been debating going around to speak to them about it, but my anxiety is through the roof recently, so I haven't been able to do so. Any ideas about how to approach this properly would be Great, please. You would be the a-hole. Speak to your neighbors like an adult before you knock on them to the landlord. Nita, it does have a very particular smell. But keep in mind that if you report them to the landlord, he may get the police involved. Could you drop a note in their, the student's, mailbox explaining the issue? Hey, yeah, what if their use is for medical purposes? Look, mind your business. If you get involved, things will get dirty and you'll regret intervening. Yeah, okay, if you know the landlord has a no-smoking rule, some landlords reserve the right, then I would say, Nita, your old landlord may have a lot of work to evict the smell after they leave. However, I also agree that you should point out to the students that others can smell it, because if you can, what's to say a passing police officer won't one day? If they disregard you, then talk to the landlord, then the ball will be in his court. I think it's clear from the way she's explaining the story that her anxiety stems from the fear of, well, becoming a bit of a party pooper, specifically dobbing on them like as if she's telling the teacher that they did a bad thing. I think Opie should focus less on how she's going to be received, but more so on how she's going to help them be more aware of the fact that they could easily get caught. That way you can stand by the fact that, hey, you're really just trying to keep the peace and make them aware that they need to better filter that air out. But if they tell you to get screwed, well then, hey, at least you were the one who did the right thing in the first place. If some people on a property are causing a stench of the place, you have every right to complain, regardless of how legal it is for them to be using that stuff to make a smell. How it gets sorted is, of course, up to the landlord, so be ready to accept the consequences. Next story by a click person. Am I the a-hole for explicitly telling my son to stop acting so gay in public? Okay, to begin with, I am completely, 100% fine with this, but the way my son has been acting in public has just been embarrassing. Before you call me homophobic or mean, please just hear me out. When I say he has been acting this way, I mean he has been wearing very explicit clothes and saying things that I think are inappropriate. Whether I have a daughter or a son, I would never condone wearing something as revealing as he has been. When I say revealing, I mean extremely short pants and crop tops. And while I get that he is trying to express himself, I also feel, as a father, I should not be letting my children wear these types of clothes. But look, when I talked to him about it, he said he felt like I didn't really accept him or understand him. I have since laid off him, but he still continues to wear these types of clothes. I don't want to bring it up again, but every time we go out in public, I honestly feel uncomfortable, because I really don't think anyone his age should be acting this way. Now, I get they are just growing up, and he is free to do this when he is older, but as his father, I feel as if I should be doing something. Look, to add on to this, some of the comments he has been saying have been extremely rude. He now uses the derogatory slang for gay people when in public, and constantly makes comments about how he is gay. Like, I get that he is technically allowed to say these things, but I feel as if other people might take it the wrong way. Would I be the a-hole if I made him stop doing this? Look, TLDR, my son is acting very inappropriate in public, but when I talk to him about it, he thinks I don't accept him as a gay person. And edit, he is 14 years old. 
Hmm, you can say something like, uh, you can wear whatever clothes you like, just that you make sure it is not too revealing as it may attract attention that you do not want and hurt you. Look, you can wear these short pants and crop tops at home, but it's inappropriate for anyone to be wearing extremely revealing things out in public. Uh, no a-holes here, though you would be the a-hole if you told him to act less gay in those terms. I mean, he's expressing himself, and your instinct as a parent to protect him is being triggered. We are also told that certain words are bad, so it makes us uncomfortable when others, who are allowed to use them, say them around us. However, you have to accept his choices, else alienate him. He should be able to wear whatever he wants. Though, as he is 14, clothes should be age-appropriate. This is unrelated to his sexuality. Now, the language is a little more difficult, but you also have to accept that it's who he is. If others judge, let them. He obviously doesn't care what they, potential bigots, think, and look, neither should you. I agree to that last part. Honestly, if people are able to judge, if people are commonly judging, they're going to regardless. I think you shouldn't encourage this uh, underlying public shame fear of yours onto your son. You're the a-hole. Your son is trying to find balance and trying to find a way to assert himself in spaces that aren't really made for him. Heterosexuality is thrown in our faces constantly, so he's literally just doing the same thing. Nata, orientation doesn't mean you have to act or dress like an idiot. Again, I have to actually agree to this bit here as well. I think the best fix here is to not refer to his uh, behavior as being gay. I think the right word you're actually looking for is peacocking or being flamboyant. It's not homophobic to criticize someone for being that kind of way, as those personality traits aren't restricted to someone's sexuality. And I think it better hits the nail on the head as to what you're trying to convey to your son about appropriate behavior in public and when it's being a bit too much. Next story by What Caddy He Done. Would I be the a-hole if I asked my husband to please cool it with his work bromance? Now, I'm a 37-year-old female, and my husband, Jake, who's 34 years old, works in a high-pressure, high-travel industry, and joined a new company last year, which meant we moved away from my family and support networks. When we moved, we had a two-year-old son. Nikki, who's a 27-year-old male, started at the company around the same time as my husband, and the two of them got on well. They both come from the same hometown, and in the macho bro culture of their industry, they don't quite fit in. Jake is gentle and sensitive, and Nikki is a camp gay man. I like Nikki, and when I met Nikki's boyfriend, I liked him as well. I was happy Jake had a work friend who wasn't a dude bro. Then three things happened at about the same time. I gave birth to mine and Jake's second child, Nikki broke up with his boyfriend, and the pandemic hit. Now, six months later, the already insular work group is a bubble. They're doing all the usual traveling, but partners and kids are not allowed to join. If it was hard to be outside the group looking in before now, it's become almost impossible. Jake is away for so long at the moment, and it's really tough. And at the same time, social media posts featuring Jake and Nikki are popping up constantly. Jake is six foot four and Nikki is five foot four, so there's cuteness value in them wearing matching shirts or sleeping on each other's shoulders in an airport or whatever. But there's so much of it. I'm wondering whether it's still just a bromance, especially for Nikki. And if that's true, I'm feeling hurt over this. Part of it is the jealousy that Nikki gets to be with my husband more than I do. But also, well, Nikki is so cute. I've gained weight in an unflattering places after having two kids, and I'm ten years older. Nikki is so little and elfin and pretty that in a couple of pictures, peering up at Jake from under his arm or some other cuddly pose, I would have picked him to be a young woman. I don't really think that Jake would cheat on me, but my overactive brain has thought of plenty of situations where Nick makes a pass and Jake, given we haven't had it on since before the birth of our daughter, takes him up on it. Would I be the a-hole for asking Jake to just stop? To move away from Nicky and definitely keep him at arm's length. To become more friendly with the dude bros instead. I know that Jake is Nicky's closest friend, but if I have to see another Instagram bromance photo, I may lose it. I just want to be the only person my husband is cute with. Is that so wrong? I'm not sure why you are comparing yourself looks-wise to Nikki. If your husband is hetero, then Nikki could look like a great god and it wouldn't matter. I think maybe you're focusing on the wrong things. Your husband needs to take more time for you, but not necessarily at the expense of a friend. 
Yeah, you ta. I don't have many friends, and I'd be devastated if my significant other asked me to put one of them at arm's length, especially over something as petty as jealousy. That hurts on a lot of levels. I think it would come off better if you told him how you're feeling instead of reacting to it on your own. By virtue of working with his friend, he's naturally going to see him more, but that doesn't mean he can't put more effort into your relationship while he's with you. Just. Be nice about it, you know? Yeah, Ta, if you address this like the problem is just their behavior and not mostly your insecurities and jealousy. Talking about toning it down and being aware of boundaries, sure. Just asking him to stop a friendship because you feel fat? That would be unacceptable controlling. I say, Nata, you're uncomfortable and you voiced your discomfort. Your husband is not respecting your boundaries and feelings. Yeah, Nata, because of this part. You're edging into a-hole territory with the jealousy, however. This really has nothing to do with bromance, Nikki's sexuality, or the fear of your husband cheating on you with a man. It has everything to do with the fact that you moved away from your family and support networks for your husband's work, and now he's spending time away from you with someone else, doing stuff you and your new baby are excluded from. He needs to be around for you. Okay, but I feel like we're missing the fact here that he literally has to be away from her due to work. Like, the bubble thing isn't necessarily just because they don't want to have to deal with being around their family. It's clearly some sort of COVID measure. And unless she's able to financially support both of them and the kids, I don't think Jake really has a choice into whether or not he gets to be around his wife and kids. That said, I definitely think he should be making a bit more of an effort, especially when his wife brings up that she's been feeling rather lonely. But also, that doesn't mean he should have to cut off being with his friend just because you're jealous. Jealousy is a you problem. Only after you tell that person about your feelings does it become their problem too, based on how they treat you. Next story by Hugh Joe Boss. Am I the a-hole for punishing my children equally? My wife and I have always tried to teach our children right from wrong, good morals, and that money and possessions don't make you a better person. We thought we were doing a good job. My wife and I are not wealthy, and COVID-19 hit us hard this year. Despite what we managed to save up to buy our kids, twin boy and girl 10 years old, Nintendo Switches, and a couple of games for their birthday back in July. Now, my cousin Lee and his wife are very wealthy. Large house, cars, pool, tennis, and basketball courts. Cash to burn. They're nice people. We're close. Lee just had a birthday and threw a small birthday party. We were all tested before and after. Masks were worn. We social distanced. This is allowed in accordance with state law. My kids have always been jealous of their cousins. Lee's kids, who are similarly aged to them. Every time we visit, they complain at everything they have that we don't. We've always taught them that character matters more than money. When we got home from that party, I noticed my kids were acting funny off in a corner together. I discovered that they were looking at an album of those gold Pokemon cards, the solid gold ones. I knew they weren't my kids. My daughter admitted her brother took them from her cousin's room. My wife and I were ticked off. Our daughter said she saw her brother sneak inside during the party and he showed her the cards before hiding them in the car. She went so far as to sneak them in the house wrapped in her towel because our son forgot his towel at Lee's. I understand that she didn't actually take them, but she assisted the deceit. She also assisted when she didn't come speak to her mum and I. They both know better. They're ten. They know stealing is wrong. They both complained that it wasn't fair that their cousins have so much and we have so little, that their cousin doesn't even play with the cards, that they were in the closet. That makes me think my son may have planned this because how would he have known where the cards were? To punish them, I took away both their switches for one week. My daughter protested that it was unfair to lose her switch when she didn't do as much wrong as my son. My wife agreed. I am standing firm. They are on day three of seven of their punishment. My daughter is giving me the silent treatment. Now I understand why she's upset, but I consider lying by omission where theft is involved just as bad as actually taking the item that isn't yours. But am I the a-hole for punishing them equally? Tuh, Nata, she assisted in stealing. That's not a lie of omission. That's taking an active role in the crime. Yeah, okay, those are from a Burger King promotion in 1999. They are not cheap. 
I have the Pikachu. Last evaluation was over $100, including the Pokeball it came in. Your kids are lucky no charges were pressed. Yeah, They both did something wrong, and it's fair to punish them equally. However, you have a partner who you should be agreeing about punishment with. Mm, that's not lying by omission. That's aiding and abetting, not the a-hole. Yeah, this was a popular story, but definitely an open shut case. Two little brats who deserve the punishment they've received. Absolutely not the a-hole. This story by Did You Know 999. Am I the a-hole for losing my stuff on my mum for signing a lease with my dad? My mum is finally divorcing my extremely toxic father, and I have been with her every step of the way. I have been her number one supporter throughout all of this, and my father has turned our lives into a living hell in attempts to prevent us from escaping. We were looking frantically for a rental last month. It's really hard to find a rental that will accept a woman going through divorce with uncertain income and two pets, but we finally found a rental out in the country that would take us. It was super peaceful, and we agreed that it would be a great place to heal. We had many conversations over many days, and came to the conclusion that the single most important criteria for our new place would be one that didn't have my dad's name on the lease, so that he wouldn't legally have the right to be there anytime he wanted. It's been a reoccurring issue. He's changed the locks on us, forced us out of our home through intimidation, and showed up at 12 a.m. when he knew everyone was trying to sleep. This location was perfectly fine with just our names on the lease. Right before we were going to sign, she decided to go look at another property closer by. Immediately after checking it out, she signed a lease for that one without consulting me at all. She said it was perfect, so I assumed that meant they didn't care it was just me and my mum's name on the lease either. Today, I found out that wasn't the case. I felt like for the first time in years, I had something to live for. A glamour of hope that we could finally have freedom, independence, and security. But today, when I saw my dad's name on the lease for the new location, that all went away. She went behind my back, I think because the second location was more familiar, and did something she knew I would absolutely be against. Not only did she betray me, but she continued to be dishonest by not telling me what she had done and allowed me to continue busting my butt off to aid her in absolutely everything. I've been breaking my back despite being chronically ill to help her in this move. I'm her biggest and only cheerleader. On days when she's too anxious to make a meal for herself, I fed her, and she still did not bother to freaking tell me. I might be an a-hole because I seriously lost it afterwards. I was screaming and crying. I have diagnosed PTSD, she knows, from living with my father all my life, and the idea of being somewhere my dad no longer had access to finally gave me a reason to get out of bed in the morning. She took it from me, and I don't think she had the right to do it when we had another perfectly good option set up in the first place. Like, am I the a-hole for freaking out? I hate that I freaked out so badly, but I literally could not have reacted in any other way. Whew, okay, info. There's no details about what your freak out entailed, so there's no real way to know if you acted like an a-hole or not. Uh, I was screaming and crying. Okay, but what did you say? Things like, how could you do this to me? We agreed that this is the only way we could ever feel safe. All I ever wanted was to feel safe, and you took that from me, etc. The whole thing she was trying to argue is that she thought she was doing what was best for me, even though I told her every day for months that all I wanted was to be somewhere he didn't have access to. I didn't care if we lived in a cardboard box as long as we were away from him. Not the a-hole. This means she wants to keep your dad around. It takes an abused person approximately seven times to leave the abuser. She has a long road ahead of her. Time for you to think about yourself. Google for domestic violence help and your city. There may be groups that will help you finding housing away from your dad and mom. Hugs. Yeah, no way holes here. You have every right to be upset, but toxic, abusive relationships are extremely complex and really, really hard to break out of. Your father might be threatening your mother behind the scene. That bit of familiarity in the area might be the only thing that makes her feel safe and so much more. Communicate with your mother and talk about how you can support each other and steps she can make to get him out of your life safely and for good. I have an old friend whose uh, mother did do this similar thing, where after some time being away from the husband, she suddenly got back with him again. It became apparent through the mother's uh, attempts at hiding it 
that she was financially struggling, the husband was aware of this and pretty much pressured her into getting back with him because, well, she belonged there and he was the only one who could financially keep her happy. So she did. But secretly, behind his back, for the next about year and a half, she was saving up all the money he was leaving to the side for her to use whenever he allowed her to use it. Then, when he least expected it, she divorced him, fled with a ton of money that she now had, thanks to him giving it away to her, all because he thought that he took her back into his control. Now, of course, I'm not saying that's definitely what your mother's doing. It's likely she is just taken under his uh, web of lies once more. What I will try and say, though, is that don't give up on her. Not yet. In regards to how you reacted, though, Natar, I think you're very valid to feel this way. Regardless of how you reacted so sporadically and extreme, I think it's fair to say it was justified. You're not the a-hole. You are valid to feel this way. Well, looky at you at the end of this video. That means you enjoyed yourself. So, um, I think it's fair to say you should like the video. Don't break my heart. Again, guys, genuinely thank you for sticking around this far to see my face at the end of it. I'll have to see you for the next one then, because I do have to scoot. Bye-bye, have a good one, love your face, and I'll see you tomorrow.